let's dive right into the lesson. I have a scenario on the board, a gentleman I've been going back and forth with. I mean, back and forth, right? There's, there's a lot, there's some people where, where it's real easy to uh, get the line of credit and for others, it's a, it's a bit of a journey, right? Because you have to do a lot of pregame work before we can actually get started, okay? So for this gentleman on the board, it's one of those scenarios where, you know, say, like, hey, what is this? What is that? What is this? What is that? So I might listen. Let me throw it on the board, all right? This is the benefits of when you have an accountability partner, when you make a commitment, you know, when you sign up and you become a part of this channel and part of this community and you, and you give and receive, here are the results, okay? So let's break down what the four major numbers real quick. Here's his income, $3,500, expenses, $3,300, total debt, $338 and cash flow is about 150 bucks, okay? Now, I am going to read a approval letter for a HELOC, a home equity line of credit for 50,000, okay? I'm gonna read it thoroughly, and I want you to take notes. As I read, I want you to pay attention to the wording that these banks use because they like to play games, okay? They like to confuse you, all right? Our job is to what? Dissect, rightly divide the word, okay? Rightly divide their word so we can accomplish what we need to do, right? Okay, so you have been conditionally approved for a home equity line of credit. Key word, line of credit, that's a good, that's a, that's a, Thumbs up. In the amount of 50000 at a rate of 6%. Plus prime, okay, plus prime of 0.50%, half a percent, okay, which also includes a 25% discount for automatic payments from the checking account from that same credit union. The bank that we're dealing with okay in this case it's uh, Beth Page I think that's somewhere up in Jersey of North area okay so you got line of credit HELOC write down 50,000 six percent we have that plus 0.5 right so it's gonna really it's really 6.5 but if we do automatic payments we're gonna we're gonna get a, a discount of 0.25 okay Continue on, you also qualify for the promotional rate of 3.99% for 12 months. Ah, not bad. As long as, oh, oh, as long as you take a minimum cash advance of $25,000 at closing. Hmm. That gets a hmm, not a, not a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but a hmm, okay? Now, a minimum cash advance of 25,000 must be maintained for 12 months or there will be an automatic rate adjustment of 0.25%. Final rate may be higher or lower depending on the appraised value of this guy's property. Initial rate could be subject to change, okay? Beth Page Financial Credit Union will cover all costs. That's a thumbs up. Beth Page Financial Credit Union will cover all costs on lines up to a half a million dollars. Not bad. We're only getting 50. So I'm in that loop. The credit union retains the right to recover full closing costs if the line slash loan, line slash loan, is closed within the first 36 months. So to avoid getting charged closing costs, it would be ideal to keep the account open more than three years. Now, how long do you think it's gonna take us to wipe out $338,000 of debt using a home equity line of credit? Okay, I want you to let, you know, sink that in. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing. Remember how the fixed rate loan option 
for the amount of 50000 at a rate of 6.38%, which includes the 0.25 discount for automatic payments from the account. This is a term of 240 months or 20 years. Okay. A fixed rate loan option disbursement will count towards minimum requirements for the promo rate. Payments on the FRLO, okay, which is fixed rate loan option, are principal and interest payments. What does that mean? When I am doing velocity banking, when I'm putting money in, that is considered a payment to the HELOC and the money is going to get separated principal and interest. Now, when we're doing velocity banking, I'm sure you can agree with me that if I'm putting in my what? My whole income, majority of that money is going to be principal and a very finite is going to be interest. Okay, so after all that has been said, I took the liberty of putting it on the board for you. Okay, so we have all the criteria on the board for this specific HELOC. Now, between us, I want your opinion on this. Do you think this is a good HELOC? For this particular scenario, if I'm making only $3,500 a month, I have high expenses, high debt, very little cash flow. Okay? Now, let me throw a wrench. Let me throw a wrench into the equation here. Now, here's what they told this guy, which was, hey, we'll give you this based on if you pay off two debts. So he has to pay off two debts. The total debts is $15,433.28. So what you're telling me is not only do I have to withdraw $25,000 at closing, but I also have to pay 15000 towards two debts. So the total number comes out to $40,433.28. Okay? If I took the option of that promo rate, notice how I put the 3.99% for the first 12 months, what would that look like in terms of my cost? Right, because not only am I qualifying the line of credit, but I also need to determine cost. What is it going to cost me? Right, because there is a cost to borrow money, to leverage money. Our goal in velocity banking is to minimize that cost. So, on a year basis, if I owe 40 grand for the entire year, 12 months. That's the most amount of interest I'll pay is $1,600. On a daily rate, $4.42. A month, $132. What is the goal, class? We want to stay in this range. Okay, we want to stay there. So, I'm going to ask, I'm going to turn to the questions now. Okay, question one is, do you think this is a good HELOC based on the criteria Based on the income, okay, cash flow, or do you think we should look somewhere else? What are your thoughts? It's not per se the actual line of credit itself, the debt tool. It, you know, what's also going to be my deciding factor is how his money is right now. Okay, so here's what I would do. First option is because I've already ran my credit, okay? I already got my credit ran, so that's an inquiry. So the chances of me getting another type of line of credit might be a delay. So I would go back to the bank, if I was this gentleman, and I'd say, hey,
Do I have to withdraw the 25,000? Do I have to withdraw that 25,000? If not, then we're in a good place. You know why? Because I could care less about this promotional offer. I could care less. 6.38 is not that far away from 3.99, especially when we're talking simple interest, okay? You can do simple math and basically say at 6.38%, then maybe I'm paying uh, five to six dollars a day, maybe a little bit more, okay? But here's the thing, if I don't have to take out 25,000 and I only do 15, then at 6.38%, my daily rate is gonna be less than that, is it not? It's gonna be less than that, do the math for me. Someone do the math for me on, just calculate, do $15,433.28 times it by 6.38%. Let me know what you get on a yearly, on a daily and on a monthly basis, please. Someone do that for me, okay? So that is the first thing that I would do, is I would sacrifice the promotional offer so that I don't have to take out 25 Gs. Why? Because it violates my rule on the, uh, you know, taking out too much money on a HELOC. I could understand if this dude was making 10,000 a month, different story. If I was making 10,000 a month, different story, okay? So, I would um, first see if I can avoid this withdrawal, initial withdrawal. Sacrifice the promotional rate and just go with the 15K. I know I can zero out 15K a lot faster than 40,000, okay? So that's option number one. Option number two is we go all in, okay? Now this is not terrible, this isn't the best type of HELOC, but it's a start. He got approved. Most people, a lot of people don't even get approved. I have some families that get denied because they don't have enough equity in the home or it's too early or credit's bad, whatever the case may be. So he actually has it. Worst, worst case scenario, we go all in and we pull out the whole 40. I still have about 10K of space, okay, which is not a lot, a little high risk there. I did wipe out 15 grand, okay? Here's what I do to be a little slicky slick, a little slickster, is I take the 25 out, right? And I would dump $24,999.99 back into that thing. Technically, I didn't pay it off. And I'll just let it sit the whole 12 months. Mmm. Maybe I can do that. Maybe if the banks don't catch on me. Who knows? They might try to, they might try to play with me on that. But worst case scenario, we could go that route. Where we take out the whole 40. We pay 15K to two debts, which would increase my cash flow to $332, okay? Worst case scenario, if I'm dumping in $3,500 each and every month into the HELOC, how long would it take me to pay off the initial, the initial $40,000? It would take me right up to the 12 months. It would take me right up to the whole year, okay? Now, obviously, he's taking out expenses each and every month. So yes, the debt is going to linger on after the 12 months, probably another six to seven at max. But that's a worst case scenario. Best case scenario, in my opinion, is if I go to the bank and they say, Denzel, no, you have to withdraw the money at closing. I'm like, all right, let me ask you something. If I were to take the 25,000 out and I don't use it all, can I put it back in? If they say, yeah, that's fine. As long as you don't pay back 
the whole 25,000 in full, which is what this says. It says a minimum cash advance of 25,000 must be maintained for 12 months or there will be an automatic rate adjustment of 0.25%. So worst, worst, worst case scenario, if I did pay back the 25,000 within the 12 months, my interest rate only goes up a quarter. That's not bad. That's not bad. Remember, we're doing velocity banking. This debt is not going to linger for very long. Okay? So let me know your thoughts on that. How did you like that? Because, mind you, I know we, we could just look somewhere else, right? But then again, this stuff ain't easy to acquire. Okay? It's not that easy to acquire. Number two, the credit already got ran. So he's been approved. I think his option number one is to see if we don't have to withdraw the money, right? If we do, then okay. Take the whole 40, sacrifice the, uh, oh no, we don't even have to sacrifice it. This would be our cost for out throughout the year. Cash flow goes up to 332. This 25,000 bucks. Remember, it's not being used for anything. What is he using it for? Nothing. So I could stuff it all back into the HELOC and then just continue to do velocity banking on what? The actual 15, which this is technically, this technically would have been my first chunk for this gentleman, which would be somewhere around this number. Very safe number to start out with. Would you agree? Turn over to the questions. All right, Ms. Johnson, I agree. This sounds like they are stacking the, dents, the debts against them. Okay, uh, Oregon Cashflow Pro says, just pay back whatever you don't need of the 25000 that you have to start with. Did I miss something? No, you didn't. You're good. Credit union will work with you. Will not run credit use uh, for 90 days. Could just go for a personal line of credit. You could. You could. But, you know, I, I like the fact that he did get 50K because over the long haul, that's going to do me real well. I'm going to be able to go a lot faster, making some real nice chunks. Why not take the 25K and pay the 15, then use the remaining 10K to make payments back on the initial 25? Okay, Mr. Wynn, got to understand that the bank is going to pay his debts, not him. The bank says to him that we're going to pay two of his debts, okay, which was the 15000 So that's 15000 there, plus he has to withdraw 25k, all right? That's according to what I've been reading. Now, obviously, this HELOC isn't set in stone just yet, but I feel like this is going to be a really, really great, uh, you know, open... Q&A dialogue that we can do for this guy to make sure he gets in the right direction. Okay. Uh, let's see, Oregon. 0.25% is nothing. Quarter, yeah. If you're, if you're paycheck parking, you're right. You're totally right. I wouldn't worry about the, the maintaining the balance. Neither would I. I wouldn't mind because over the long haul, I know I can get this guy debt free within four to five years or even less, right? And there are some other factors that we could uh, factor in, which is, does this guy have a 401k? Does he have savings? Does he have um, money going elsewhere? Can we redirect cash flow back to us? Yes, All right? So those are some things we could work on. All right, I thought the same, but guess I need to Guess I need Denzel to explain why that isn't an option. Which one, Ruben? Uh, use the twenty-five thousand for the fifteen thousand. Money costs money. Play the game, or it plays you. You are right. The catch is the intro rate. There you go. That's the underlining thing. That's what they're trying to trick them. That's really all it is. Forget the intro rate. Muhammad says, the bank seems to be happy when you do not take advantage 
of the intro rate. I'm the same way. That's how that's how I broke this down. That's how I was thinking. I'm like, okay, you know, let me really read this thing thoroughly. What is it telling me? What is their benefit? What's the bank's benefit? They benefit if I keep the money out as long as possible so that they can what? Feed feed on the interest. If they can feed on the interest, right? Then they're a happy bank. They continue to lend money um, in the form of loans and, and it's an outstanding balance, right? They don't expect this guy to be dumping in 3,000, 3,000, 3,000 every single month, right? So we can, you know, we can do a little finesse move. I think our best finesse move is, I'll say it one more time, see if we can avoid the 25K withdrawal and just sacrifice the 3.99 and settle for 6.38. And mind you, it's fixed. So I don't have to worry about this. It's a fixed rate. I'm cool with that, yo. I'm cool with that. I'm happy. I'm a happy guy. Right? Nobody did the math for me. Where's my math? $15,433.28. Times that by 6.38, please. And tell me what you get in terms of cost. Okay? Because that right there, I promise you, is going to be a whole lot less than this right here. It's going to be a whole lot less. And either way, my cash flow goes up to 332.17. How long do you think it will take me to zero out 15,000 to be able to do my next chunk of 15,000? What do you think? Okay, Denzel does not withdrawing 25K lose one of the two debts that has to be paid? No. No. It's 25K and 15K, totaling 40,000. Oregon says 948 interest for a year. What is that? That's not bad. Divide that 948, divide it on, but divided by 365. What do you get? You're probably like somewhere in like a dollar something a day. I like that. I like that. So forget the promo, do the 15, and let's do some velocity banking. Okay? Here's how it would look. Okay, if I have just the 15 out. Okay, so here would be my uh, balance on the HELOC owed. Okay? Owed. Income. The 351776, okay, brings the balance down. Now you got to take out expenses, okay? What are expenses now? They're down, okay? So it's probably like 3K and some change, right? 3K plus and some change. Balance goes back up. He keeps doing this. If you were to simply divide the 15 by the 35, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, okay, that's, that's five to six months to pay off the original 15K, all right? And then the debt just becomes revolving thereafter, where now I'm just pulling out what I need for expenses and I'm putting back I'm paying myself back. Okay? Not bad. Yeah, two two seventy a day. Two dollars and seventy cents a day is a hell of a lot better than the interest that he was paying on these two debts right here, which gained him to double his cash flow in one shot. Alright? So I would work out a scenario where I would want this gentleman to make um, a $15,000 chunk probably every 9 to 10 months at max, like 9 to 10 months, okay, just to 
to buy us some time. And if you're wondering, you're like, whoa, 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 Denzel. There is no way on earth that with cash flow of 332, is he going to pay off 15,000 in nine to 10 months? The math is not there, buddy, buddy, right? And I would agree with you, mind you, got to remember, look how much space I have in the line of credit though. How much space I got in there. I got a lot of space, my friend. I can do some damage. So I don't necessarily have to pay off the whole debt in order for me to make my next chunk. That's the benefit of having large credit lines, okay? Is I can extend it out. I can keep the balance outstanding and still pay what? 270 a day. Are you cool with paying 270 a day? It's gonna be less. It's really not gonna go no more than 270. Why? Because I'm never I'm not gonna really breach an outstanding balance of more than 30,000 at any given time. I'm not gonna breach my what? My 66% ratio, my two thirds. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna breach it. So if I if the amount of space that I have from 15,000 to two thirds of 50 grand is quite a bit of space. So what's nice is if I was to look at this gentleman's finances, okay? So whenever I'm working with people, I have you fill out a really, really detailed financial form, all right, which lists out all your incomes, debts, expense, cash flow, all that good stuff, and I analyze it, I'm like, okay, how fast can I get to the cash flow? How fast can I get to it? So I look at his debts and I'm like, hmm, he's got the big old mortgage, obviously, inside of this 338 for 280,000. Monthly payment is 800 bucks. Am I gonna start on that right away? No, no need, I got other debts. He's got a PayPal account that he's paying 61 bucks to every single month. Am I going to start on that? Mm, maybe. Mm, I guess I'm maybe. He's got a... Uh, he's got credit cards that we owe money on. He's paying 70 here, 60 there, 30 there, 43 there. So what I would do consistently after I what? After I clear out the initial debt of the 15, which is going to take me no more than nine to 10 months at max. So by September or October of 2019 is when I would have this gentleman make another chunk towards probably all of his credit cards, just wipe those out clean, increase my cash flow another 200 bucks or so. And then the only thing I would ask him is, hey, can you get me a dollar raise between now in 10 months, can you do that for me? Give me a dollar raise. That'll, that'll improve our cash flow by at least 100, 150 bucks per month. And that'll get me right at the 500 plus cash flow mark where I can start doing some damage. Okay? Start doing some damage. Then, after I clear out the initial two debts that the bank wanted me to do, all his credit cards, okay? All of his smaller debts. Then we tackle the mortgage, okay? Oh, but you know what? I'm looking at his debt right now. He's got, he has an auto loan. He's got an auto loan for how much? 29,000. Payments are 530 a month. That is a big chunk of cash flow right there that we can tackle, okay? So by 2020, around February, March-ish is when I would probably get started on this car note, start chunking at that. That could take me about a year or less to wipe that out, boom. Still gaining equity in my home. Here's another cool tip, every year of doing Velocity Banking, every year of doing Velocity Banking, 
we can potentially increase our HELOC by however much debt we wiped out initially. Okay, in that same time period. So it's really, really good. Um, any questions so far on what I've been saying? Is this stuff really good? Are you liking this? Are you enjoying this quick little, you know, class session on qualifying the line of credit? 